Hello guys and welcome to the second part of the MVVM shopping list tutorial. In this tutorial we will start to implement the MVVM pattern. And first of all, I want to rename our main activity because I don't like the name. I want rather to have a name that fits more the use of the class. So we go on a refactor and rename. And I will name it shopping activity. Press enter and it will be changed everywhere where the name occurs. Also, I want to change the XML layout name of our activity, so we do the, the same for that. We right click, go on the refactor, rename, and I'll name it activity shopping. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to create a class that represents a table in our database. Um, that class is called an entity. You probably know that if you are familiar with databases, but if you are not, um, don't worry, I will explain it. So we go under our package, right click, new Kotlin file or class. Then we make sure to select class and I'll name it shopping item. Okay, we want to make this class a data class. So we have to add the data keyword that basically tells the Kotlin compiler that the main purpose of this class is to hold data. So if you don't know what an entity is, in SQL that is basically just a table of our database. So inside of that we want to declare what our um, shopping items will look like. So every shopping item needs a name and the amount. So we can um, save it in the database. And first of all, we need to add an annotation for that, that this class is an entity. We do that by writing add entity. And inside of that, we need to um, specify the table name. So we write table name and I'll name it shopping items. So now we'll um, create the constructor. Inside of that, we want to add the entries, which our table will have. That is firstly the name, which is a string. And secondly, the amount, which is an integer. So the name and the amount will basically represent a column in our database. So each of those will represent a column in our database. And the name of the column will be the same we choose for the variable, so amount and name. But if we want to choose the name of the column, we will um, we have to add another annotation, which is column info. And inside that we write name is equal to, let's say, item name. And we do that also for the amount. We write add column info, name is equal to item amount. So if we leave the class like that, room will throw an error because the table is missing a primary key. A primary key is basically also another column that is unique for every entry. So right now we could choose the same name and the same amount for two items, but SQL needs basically another row, uh, another column, sorry, um, that is unique for every entry. So for that we want to add an ID that every item has another ID. And to do that we write here var ID, which is an integer, a nullable integer, and we set that to null. And we have to annotate it with primary key. And inside of the parentheses we set auto generate to true. That basically means that Room will do the work for us and generate all the IDs so we don't have to set them manually, which is also why we don't set the ID in the constructor. All right, so that's it for the shopping item class. The next thing we want to do is to tell Room how we want to access our database. So for that, we have to, do, we have to um, create an interface, which is called a DAO that is short for data access object. And inside of that interface, we declare the different methods we need to access our database. For example, we want to have a method that 
um, is used to insert data. We want to have a method to delete data. We want to have a method to update data. And finally, we want to have a method to get all of our shopping items saved in the database to show them up in the recycler view later on. So to do that, we go under our package, right click new Kotlin file or class, make sure to select interface here and I'll call it shopping DAO. And we have to annotate that class again, this time with DAO to tell room that this is an DAO interface. And inside of that interface, we want to declare our functions to access the database. First of all, I want to have a function absurd, which takes an item, which is a shopping item. This function is basically a mix of update and insert. So if the ID of that item we pass here isn't available in the database, it will insert it. And if it is already available, then it will update it instead. But to tell Room to do exactly that behavior, we have to add an annotation. First of all, we need to write add insert to tell it that it's an insertion method. And in the parentheses, we want to add an on conflict strategy. So we write on conflict is equal to on conflict strategy dot replace. So whenever the ID of that item is already in the database, we want to replace it instead. The next function will be our delete function. So we write function delete, which also takes an item, the item we want to delete. And you probably guessed it, we have to annotate it with delete. Now in SQL, um, it doesn't allow to write to the database in the main thread. So we have to do, we have to call these functions asynchronously which basically means that we have to use either a thread or in Kotlin, we can use coroutines. And to mark this function as a function that can be executed asynchronously, we write the suspend keyword before that function keyword. Also at the delete because, because that's also a writing operation. But don't worry, you don't have to understand coroutines for now. I will explain them later on when we really implement them in our code. So the third and last function we want to implement here is a function to get all shopping items, which doesn't take any parameters, but it returns a live data, which I explained in the last tutorial, which is a live data of a list of shopping items. So normally, this function would just return a list of shopping items. So basically all of our items, but with live data, we just put that return type inside of the live data object. So the live data will make it really efficient to update our recycler view later on. We have to annotate that function with add query because we want to insert our own query. And inside there we write select everything from and now we want to insert our table name which we spe specified in the shopping item class here and that is basically shopping items and that's basically it for the shopping DAO object next we want to create a class that represents our actual database we go on our package again create a new class make sure to select class and I'll call it shopping database. And make sure to mark this class as an abstract class. And we have to annotate it again, surprise, <laughs> um, with database. And inside the parentheses, we have to specify which entities belong to our database. In our case, we only have the shopping item entity, so we only have one entity. So we write entities is equal to, and now we have to use an array because there could be many entities. And inside of that array, we write shopping item class. So we, we refer to the class of our shopping item. 
And after that, we have to specify a version for our database, which is basically one. But every time you change something in the database later on, you have to update the version too. Otherwise, Room will throw an error. This class will inherit from Room database. And inside of that, we need to declare a function that refers to our shopping DAO object. That is also an abstract function get shopping DAO, which just returns a shopping DAO. With that function, we just make sure that we can access our database operations from inside the database class. Next, we have to create a companion object, which is basically what the static keyword in Java means we have to create an instance of the shopping database inside of that class, which is called a singleton, because it would make any sense to um, allow it to create multiple instances of the same database at the same time. So we have to make sure that there's only one instance at a time. And for that, we write private var instance, which is shopping database shopping database and it is also nullable we set that to null initially and we annotate it with volatile that basically means that writes to this instance will be made visible instantly to other threads we need to do that because we really want to make sure that only one thread at a time is writing to that instance because otherwise it could be that there are two threads and both want to initialize that instant variable at the same time. And then we would have two instances of the same shopping database, which we don't want here. So now we want to write a method that is used to instantiate our actual database. So write private function create database, which takes a context and that method is equal to room dot database builder which takes the context but make sure to um, write application context otherwise it will throw an error um, the second parameter as you can see here is the class of the shopping database so we write shopping database colon class dot java and finally, we have to choose a name um, with which the database is basically saved. I will write shopping db dot db, and finally call the build method on that. Now we want to create an operator function, invoke. Operator function, especially in combination with invoke, basically means that this function is executed whenever we create an instance of our shopping database class so whenever we write something like like that then this function will be executed the invoke function will take a context too and it will return our instance but oops instance but if our instance is null, that is basically in Kotlin the null operator, so it will return the instance. But if it is null, it will return whatever is right of that operator. Then it will return synchronized. That basically makes sure that no other threads will access that instance at the same time. For that, we have to create a log object, which is private val log, which is an any object and we have to pass it here. And inside of that synchronized block, we want to check again. If our, so we want to return our instance and check again if it is null. If it is null, we want to call our create database function with the context we passed here, dot, no, not application context here, um, and recall dot also instance is equal to it. 
So that function may be a little bit confusing for you in the beginning. Um, it basically is called every time we create an instance of that shopping database and it will return our instance. But if our instance is null, it will call that synchronized block. So no other threads can set the instance at the time when we execute the code inside of that block. So inside of that block, we check again if the instance is null. And if it is null, we want to create it. So we call the create database method with the context. And that also keyword basically means that we set our instance after calling the method to whatever the result of that method is. That is basically it. So that's everything I wanted to show you in this tutorial. I hope you like it and if so, please leave a like and comment below. That really helps me to provide you even better content in the future. And see you in the next time. Have a good day. Bye bye.